Well, this week, Microsoft rolled out social credit score. Microsoft already does this, but they did it for the Xbox and how can a company like Microsoft feel it's okay to begin a social credit system based on primarily monitoring their own definition of hate speech, which we've already seen get conservatives and Christians banned off entire platforms like formerly Twitter. Are you ready to get banned from Xbox, maybe Skype, Word, Excel, just for saying or writing about your convictions, not in the spirit of hate, but in standing up for your own belief system? And what if you're writing an article about something that you have a deep conviction about on Word, or your pastor is writing a sermon on male and female, and all of a sudden Microsoft looked at this and shut down the PC because they considered it something that was unethical. This is where it's going. It may not be there yet, but it's going. And it's starting with the Xbox new social credit system. I wanna make sure though, that you're subscribed to the channel so you can get a fresh biblical perspective on all things in culture. And we get to navigate with you the things that are happening right now. So let's do it together. I'm gonna to make videos that impact the way you hold on to your faith. So smash that button. And we also have a weekly podcast every Monday that's a shortened version of all these stories. So if you can't listen to the long form version, make sure to either subscribe to your podcast, The Sean Bull Show, on any podcast server or watch with us live at 10 a.m. for 30 minutes every Monday. You're going to love it. So Microsoft's recent introduction of a credit scoring system is wild. A social credit scoring system, they don't call it that, of course, but The Verge magazine covered this. They sat down with Microsoft and Xbox to discuss the impact on Xbox but now it's clear it's extending beyond gaming, touching Office Suite, Skype, and more. This is pretty scary to me. And one of the most alarming insights is that Microsoft's new system seems to have its crosshairs aimed predominantly at hate speech. And we're gonna talk about this because it's pretty scary, a term that they're defining themselves. Listen to The Verge's deep dive on this topic here. It's revealing that there have been quiet actions on user accounts that we weren't even aware of. So if you've been playing Xbox, there's been quiet actions on your account for a while, and there's now a new strike system where you can see a user getting multiple strikes at once, and if you just get eight of them, you're banned for a year and possibly forever. That results, you know, of course, the year-long ban, but what about the whole program? It's effective already today. So before I go over the actual strikes that you can get and how you can get banned, as laid out by the Microsoft Professionals Verge article, I do wanna tell you we have a sponsor today that's gonna help you secure your retirement and your investments and one of the things that's maintained its value for over 5,000 years, which is gold, this is Birch Gold, the company that we trust with our own investments. Have you ever actually considered making an investment in gold that has a pretty big return if done right and is a secure asset? Well, Birch Gold has a free investment package for you that you can do at least the basics of what's available and how your 401k or the IRA can be invested even in a partial way into precious metals to diversify you. And the US dollar is no longer backed by gold, but you can be for real, so go to birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles today and you're gonna be able to get your free information packet. But let's get back down to the breakdown. This is incredible. So the strikes happen, you're gonna be amazed at this. Only 1% might get strikes as discussed by The Verge magazine. And the framework seems pretty intensive though. It's really unclear in some ways. And the existing features already are allowing muting personal content and content management. So I can ban somebody or mute somebody already, which I think having community controls is even better. I think you can put some filters in it, but to have strikes the way that Xbox feels they need to amplify the controls is crazy. The number one uh, way you get strikes and offenses, which is just one strike, is cussing and also cheating. Now, ironically, cussing is in the video games itself, like Call of Duty and some of these games. There's a lot of cussing in the game. So if you get a strike for cussing on top of that, no, I don't cuss, but if people get strikes for cussing and yet there's cussing in the games, that's so hypocritical and so weird to me. But also cheating, it only gives you one strike. Now that's one of the least forms of getting a strike is cheating. Cheating when you're online, people pay money and invest into skins and invest into things that give them not an advantage in the gaming, but an advantage in the sense of how they relate to the game. And so if you can cheat and not really get a strike on something that people are paying money for, it's really unfair. That should be much higher in everyone's opinion. All the gamers, all the forums are talking about one strike for cheating. Now you can get two strikes for explicit content. So if you talk about you know sexy activities against someone's parent or something, if you talk about like these bad things, or if you talk about anything sexual, you can get two strikes. Also harassment and bullying gets two strikes, but the harshest penalty is reserved for hate speech. Now this is trumping even profanity, cheating, and explicit content. The contentious term hate speech, I think it's contentious, it raises a lot of questions because who defines it? Is it merely a stand-in for words corporations deem unacceptable? If you find yourself getting flagged and you're left to appeal your suspense or face a year-long ban, 
how is it going to work when it comes to like you expressing your views? If you're in a chat room talking to your friends about something that hits you in politics right now and you're like, you know, I don't agree with that. And you get banned because you don't agree with it. And we've seen that happen before. Think of Babylon B on Twitter. Think about other organizations, Daily Wire on YouTube. If you express your viewpoint over what is a woman, over LGBTQ+, over these kinds of things, it could be considered, even if you're not doing it in a hateful way, you're doing it in a way to express your convictions, it can be considered hate speech. Now, we've seen that happen already in these places. It's going to happen now as a rule. So expressing views on controversial topics could have your account in hot water. And suddenly, this sets a concerning precedent, not just for Xbox, but now in other areas as well, because the individuals might find themselves getting cut off from other games that they've bought, they've purchased. They're not going to give you your money back if they ban you. They're just going to say, well, you violated the terms. So you spent $60 in this game. You're just out just because you have views that clash with tech giants. Again, this isn't like somebody when they use hate speech, this isn't just defined to somebody who's being really derogatory towards a racial group or, or someone identifying in a certain gender or sexual way. This is somebody even who expresses their opinion over something that is in a disagreement with tech giants. Again, we've seen this before. We saw even on Call of Duty, Nick Merck, who is one of uh, Xbox's main users on Call of Duty. He's, I mean, he had skins that were going to be the Call of Duty game. And he was responding to the Armenian parents' protests in Glendale, where Armenian parents and Antifa got into fights over sexual content that was inappropriate in the schools. And he actually said and left a tweet that was basically, don't mess with our kids. When he did this, within 24 hours, he was banned off of his Call of Duty account. They removed his skins, and the community, there was so much backlash against Xbox and Microsoft that everything they were posting for over a month had people saying, leave our kids alone, don't mess with our kids. And they would say, hey, here's our new Call of Duty patch, here's our new downloadable content, and you'd have 20,000 comments, not 2,000, not 500, 20,000 comments to where the moderators of Twitter specifically were trying to delete the comments that said, don't mess with our kids, because Nick Merck had every right as a Twitter user, it wasn't on Xbox itself, but as a Twitter user to express, I don't agree with transgender ideology or with uh, having sexual content in our schools, and I stand with these parents. He should be able to say that without that being a social credit system on his Call of Duty game. But because Call of Duty was mad at him and Xbox was mad at him for expressing his convictions, they called it hate speech, and he got uh, he got disqualified. He got in trouble. So this is socialism and big tech in a major way. And we have to combat that. Now, here's a big kicker. This isn't just about Xbox. Microsoft's expanding the scrutiny to Skype, Word, Excel, all their products. And even Microsoft Windows, users could be potentially banned from the software they rely on for work and personal tasks all the time. Because yes, Microsoft is monitoring and they reserve the right to sift through your private data for investigations. Do you know that they can look at, Microsoft has the rights according to their statement of rights, their declaration of rights that you've signed, that they can look through your documents when it comes to Microsoft uh, programs. So they can look through your Word documents, your Excel sheets. All those are not private for Microsoft company. Let's not forget that Xbox already landed in hot waters just about 10 years ago for having to sell out a considerable fine. I think it was over $20 million for violating your children's privacy. I mean, this is incredible. You, they violated your children's privacy and they got fined for it. So where does privacy stand in this evolving digital landscape? And how do we allow them to do a social credit system? And how do we, as conservatives or Christians, not get penalized by this? So when 10 years ago, when they were officially fined by the Federal Trade Commission for violating the privacy regulations, the FTC actually fined them, like I said, $20 million for collecting personal information from children through its Xbox console. And according to the government, Microsoft failed to ask for consent from parents, and they failed to notify parents or children, therefore violating the Children's Online Privacy Act. This is the only time that they were fined in this big of a way, but they were actually caught many other times. Also, adding fuel to this fire, The Guardian also reported, this is 10 years ago, but it just gives you context for Microsoft, that their proximity to government surveillance programs they uh, they talk about a massive surveillance initiative known as PRISM. They were the ones to break the story that PRISM was initiated back in all the way back in 2007, and they granted the government deep access to servers of major tech BMS, including Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook. I mean, Microsoft, Microsoft was one of the main ones, and this meant potentially exposing photos, emails, store data, almost every facet of online activity to their users. 
And it's especially chilling to look at this and really understand that the first company, Prism, uh, that they approached was Microsoft and the very creator of PowerPoint who actually worked with them on the Prism program and admitted it. Around the same time, Microsoft started to roll out, your privacy is our priority because they got caught with their pants down. And so they started to do this campaign, your privacy is our priority, but your privacy was not their priority. As a matter of fact, this critiques over Xbox One and its Connect 2.0 feature. If you didn't know this, there's a little device, a little camera with the Xbox One that you could not use Xbox One without this device. And it was a virtual camera that stayed on all the time. Now, the problem was it had biometrics. It could, it could uh, look at your heartbeat and it was always on so it could look what's going on in the room. It could see in the dark and it recorded so much user data from, again, movement of heart rate and it transmitted to Microsoft servers. Well, earlier concerns about Connect 2.0 violating Xbox users' privacy was really ambiguous. Like Microsoft kind of responded, but they kind of didn't. But then, according to the Guardian Prism, these revelations brought the issue into sharpening, you know, into a sharp place because they it actually showed that the Prism was using the Connect camera, which was always on recording these biometric data, that it was actually recording. Prism was looking at Microsoft servers, even though Microsoft said it wasn't. Uh, the Guardian said, according to the research that they did, it was. They went down and saying no, that it was, even if Microsoft said it wasn't, it was. And Prism was looking at their users and looking at like what was happening, they could hear with a microphone what was happening in your rooms, even when your Xbox was off. Well, this became such a privacy concern that Xbox ended up canceling their Connect uh, camera device. They actually took it away because this controversy almost sunk them, and it was terrible. But, I mean, this is crazy how when you look at Prism had an unhindered access to these servers through devices that Microsoft and other major big tech companies gave them. And despite their assurances that Connect could be deactivated, it couldn't. I mean, user data remained confined to the Xbox One without without our explicit permission. And the Prism debacle cast such a big shadow that, you know, users mandatorily logging into the internet every 24 hours on Xbox One, they had to. It guaranteed their privacy wasn't adequate, that their privacy policies and practices were terrible. Well, so the complexities of negativity and all these privacy rules have been evolving and new data sharing opportunities have been rising. So it presents challenges for consumers and Microsoft's latest offering, you know, with the Xbox issues with now the social credit score, which is what, of course, we're calling it. It really shows you how terrible privacy is right now. I know some of us look at it and go, why do I need privacy? Well, we need privacy because Privacy is a right. It's one of our human rights. I don't have anything I really need to hide, but I do want to live my life in privacy. My life is my life. And in a communication with Forbes about all of this back in those days, Microsoft clarified its stance on data sharing, emphasizing it was adhering to its legal mandates. We never hand over our customer data unless compelled by legally binding order or subpoena. Furthermore, we only specifically give account-related requests. We don't partake in broader voluntary national security initiative aimed to collect user data. Um, you know, but the growing concerns around data privacy all along and the depth of the NSA's programs, it's advisable. We have to have caution because trust in both government bodies and corporate entities is precarious right now. It's terrible. We especially given all the range of services that PRISM, you know, was doing at the time and is now still doing. The Guardian whistleblower Edward Snowden spotlighted the extensive collaboration between tech giants like Microsoft. And now we have Elon Musk and he shared all of the internal policies and procedures that Twitter was doing. I mean, Twitter, how many CIA and FBI agents had it hired on its staff? And they were former, but they were still reporting into CIA and FBI. They were still monitoring private messages on Twitter. We got all the Twitter dump from Elon Musk. So we're seeing this is still happening, even where they were looking into Outlook emails on Microsoft of that time. And if the FBI was providing the NSA with all kinds of access to cloud storage and SkyDrive and all this. Th I mean, 250 million people use SkyDrive. And they had access to that. They had access to that. And that's a big deal. So, you know, after they had the acquisition of Skype, NSA reported that uh, Prism's capacity to collect Skype video calls had amplified threefold. So Skype is still one of the main ways that people talk besides Zoom on video conference around the world. And they, I, I mean, this is the NSA says that they now have more access to you to listen in on your Skype, you know, calls. And WhatsApp is supposed to be completely, you know, um, uh, protected, but now we found out that according to what Elon Musk released with the Twitter files on and the Twitter dump of information that even WhatsApp was compromised for Meta. So this is not a safe environment to be in with our data and our privacy. On top of that, when you think of the Prism program 
and how they're looking into our world. And then you think of hate speech being defined as anything big tech disagrees with or thinks should disqualify you. This happens. I mean, this is a scary time. And some of this happens little by little. Oh, sorry. Some of this happens a little by little. So we get used to rules and regulations. It's how socialism happens. And we get used to companies monitoring us. And when you look into United Kingdom, I love you, United Kingdom, if you're watching this. But when you look into some of the big brother efforts of nations that are Western nations who are monitoring more like a socialism, we got to be careful because it does take the rights and privacy away from citizens. And that's just not who we are here in America. And it shouldn't be who you are in any nation. That's an American speaking. But when you look at how companies and government organizations are looking at our lives, this is a huge concern. And recently, this little video showed up. I have to play this video for you. And this has scared the masses. It scared me when I saw this because I just thought, what's going to happen when people can look in on our lives? Let's play that video. How about, can we go from Wi-Fi radio signals, you know, sort of like the Wi-Fi routers in your house, they're bouncing off radio signals that work sort of like sonar. Can you go from that to where human beings are to images? So what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real time 3D pose estimation. Right? So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. But how about this? I mean, computer code, that's just a type of language. So you can say, and this is a real example that I tried, GPT, find me a security vulnerability, then write some code to exploit it. So I posted in um, some code, this is from like a, a mail server, and I said, uh, please find any exploits and describe any vulnerabilities in the following code, then write a script to exploit them. And in around 10 seconds, that was the code to exploit it. <laughs> so while it is not yet the case that you can ask an AI to hack a Wi-Fi router, you can see in the double exponential, whether it's one year or two years or five years, at some soon point, it becomes easy to turn all of the physical hardware that's already out there into kind of the ultimate surveillance. I mean, are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I watched that and I thought, wow, this is gonna be done whether we know it or not. And so we live in a new time and, and I think that God wants to bring new technologies that help us with privacy because God wants us to be in control of ourselves and he wants us to be uh, protected. He wants us to be safe. He wants us to be able to be self-managed. And when you have socialism managing us or when you have big tech managing us or you have uh, wrong types of government managing us, you feel the lack of freedom. You feel the lack of identity. You feel the lack of value. And that's one of the reasons why this is so important, that when you have a social credit system like Xbox, that we rebel, we we be a loud voice, we speak against it, we speak, you know, it doesn't mean you don't participate with a game you like, but you look at the overarching thing, thing and say, I wanna go down on record that I'm not okay with this. This is not okay. I wanna know what you guys think about internet privacy and social credit scores. Please tell me in the comments below, I'll meet you there. If you're an Xbox gamer or Microsoft user and you wanna, uh, you know, what would you do if you woke up one day and you were banned from their products for a year just for holding on to a Christian belief? Talk to me about that in the comments below. Also leave your Xbox gamer tag and we can all become friends on Xbox and see how we're gonna use it together. And especially if we wanna talk in the future about things like this. Today, we have a giveaway and I wanna focus on our giveaway. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. We are gonna give away to one person who comments about why they need Wired to Hear, which is co-written by one of my best friends who's a co-host of my podcast, Explore the Marketplace, Bob Hassan. And you're Wired to Hear God's Voice, your career, purpose, and influence. And I wanna hear a comment down below about which one of you wants this book and why you need it for your career or for your purpose. And we wrote this book just for you. You can get the book if you don't wanna be part of the giveaway. Go to bullsministries.com today and you can get the book. And for those of you who are getting the book, you can also get our masterclass for free for ordering the book this month only. So I'll see you at bullsministries.com or see you in the comments or see you next time. <music>